at work. Here's my job. You're giving information. That's boring. So what's making you boring on your first date? Today, that's what Jonathan and I are talking about. Jonathan, what makes a guy boring? So one thing I want to mention is I have sat through probably 100 first dates. What I do is I go downtown with my wife and we situate ourselves next to people having a first date. And we listen and we take notes, literally. So I've got a lot of data on this that we've gathered. And I can tell you that so often the guys are so boring. So what can a guy do? How does he know he's boring and what can he do to fix it? Sure. The most boring thing you can do is give information. And it sounds kind of crazy because we think that's what a first date is about, but it's not. It's about emotion. So the most common first date questions are like, where do you go? What do you do? The first worst interaction of my entire life. I met a woman at a bar in London and I was trying to talk to her and she goes, well, tell me about how you get to work. And I was like, what? And I was taking the train. They call it the tube instead of a subway. And she would not let me change the subject. I tried to change it up 20 times. She goes, no, but is the train crowded? And I go, yeah, it's crowded, but we'll, can we talk about something else? And after 15 minutes, she goes, you're really boring. And I said, um, do you, <laughs> I was so shocked. I was like, you're literally the most boring person I've ever met because you refused to let me be interesting. She actually trapped me. So the way men give directions is the best way to understand. So when we think of how to give directions, like if you said to me, how do you get your house? I go, oh, you drive down this road, you turn left at the gas station, you turn right at the McDonald's and I'm two blocks up. And it's really waypoints. Whereas women see the journey, they tend to give much better directions. That's why men get lost more often, but it's about the journey. That's the important thing. So anytime you're giving facts, here's what I do at work, here's my job. You're giving information, that's boring always boring. What you said want to do is tell a story. Think about every single sitcom when a man and husband and wife are talking about work. She's talking about how, what each person does and what happens. And she's like, what happened at work today? Oh, I had three meetings and then I went to this. It's pieces of information rather than the journey. So if you can switch to telling that story, and it's often overwhelming to say, tell a story. Here's all you do. Just tell something that happened that you had an emotional feeling about. You can say this happened and it was stressful. This happened and it was exciting. Anything you had an emotional feel about that's all you have to do to be interesting because what people care about more is how you feel about an event and how the actual what actually happened i think women really care a lot about emotion men care more about logic women care more about emotion so when you're telling a story you care about and there's emotion in it i think that's attractive and interesting yes so the second biggest mistake people make when it comes to being interesting is being whatever you're into being shy about it so there's two ways to say this a great example of this is like i'm into comic books i know it's a nerdy hobby but i just got into it as a kid because i didn't have a lot of friends and i still collect them here's the other version i read a lot of comic books because i'm really passionate about understanding how we can approach different cultures and racism in future everything in x-men is just an allegory for talking about racism without talking about a specific race and it lets us really engage in a deeper emotional thought which is really powerful for men so when i think about comic books what i see is wow this is really big metaphor that allows people to explore how they feel about the world because men aren't often allowed to be emotional same hobby it's not the hobby both cases it's a comic book nerd, right? But what's different is that you're proud of it, right? You can be a guy who goes to conventions and dresses up as Star Trek uniform, but you can be a guy who wins. Like, oh yeah, I go to Star Trek conventions. <laughs> like whatever you're into, be very specific. And it's that's the much- behind it, isn't it? It's the passion. Yes. It's like the, you love it. It's that attractive passion. In even better way, I love the way you told that story, but it's also kind of logical. And I would say that's good, but how about this? I was always lonely as a, as when I was little. I was always by myself. My parents had split up. Uh, my uh, older siblings weren't in the house. I just spent hours by myself. And the only thing that really kept me going was reading comic books. I just, you know, I always wanted to disappear in that world. And something like that. What do you think about that? Because that kind of ties in your origin story, which is always interesting. The danger is that it's all negative, right? What you're really saying is yeah. no one in my family liked me. I was really alone and I was a really sad kid. So you have to have all, something that's, else. That's all of us. Right. So it's, it's better to tell your first story should be positive. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is a great another point. A dangerous thing to know our first date is like, let me tell you every bad thing that ever happened to me, right? That's what yeah. we don't want to become as a negative Nancy or a Debbie dad or whatever. I don't know the boy version is like a bad Bob, I guess, who's always being boring. That's what we don't want to do because think about when you sit there and you meet someone the first time and they're telling you every person at work that they're enemies with. I've been on this date before. She's like, Tammy did this. Sonia did something. Like, Who are these? Yeah. I don't know these people, but you're telling me what we think is that if people t we're always worried about negative energy so while it's the right idea um we want to tell a more positive story so if you want it let's to be a recast true story, that story let's recast sure. that story let's say you want to explain it as far as growing up but that's what happened how would sure. you put that in a negative frame of a positive frame 
Sure. I would say that like when I was a kid, I had trouble understanding how people interacted. I didn't know how to talk to people. I had trouble with conversation. So reading comic books allowed me to communicate with people better. And so reading comic books now is actually why I'm able to have such a good conversation with you. Aren't you having a good conversation? Like <laughs> by asking a question, really, isn't it crazy that comic books are the reason I'm so comfortable right now? I'm having a really good time. And it's all thanks to Betty and Veronica. Well, what I really like that. is that you asked a question and you didn't just go on and on and on about your story. That was really cool. Um, I think the boring thing is also not only the facts, but it's also droning on and on and on and not giving the person a chance to talk and the openings in the conversation. And that's a very, very common. We'll talk about that in another video. But isn't that a very common issue? No breathing room. That is the next mistake, which is asking no questions. When if you've been on a date with a woman, and you go, oh, my gosh, that was the best date of my life. We just connected for four hours. She might go home and go, he talked the whole time. We feel connection when we share more than when we listen. So if you want a person to like you, man, well, it doesn't matter. The more they talk on the date, the more likely they are to like you. Because what do people talk about the things they like? So when you're asking questions, you also want to make sure you're not a lawyer. Lawyers never ask questions they don't know the answer to, right? They're always asking yes, no questions. You want to ask open-ended questions. What is your favorite thing about where you grew up? Very powerful because you're asking for a positive emotion. So I want to hear those stories. What makes you happy? What are the, like, I don't want to hear the music you love. I want to hear the music that makes you feel good. Like, that's what I want to hear about those stories. So the, because it also tells you what kind of person they are. And those are stories I want to hear anyways. I want to find the most interesting thing about the person, the things that, so I want to hear positive stories. Like the opposite is like, oh, tell me about your last breakup. Terrible thing. How about this? Tell me about your last date. Every, if you're dating someone, every relationship they've had before you ended. <laughs> so don't, every past relationship has a negative end. So you don't want to ask about that stuff. So ask questions that are about things you're interested in. So if you're not interested in a topic, don't you not have to do it. You don't have to do things you're not interested in. What you want to do is ask questions about things that get you excited. The more fun you're having, the more they're having, then it makes it a lot easier. So that's really how to have a much more interesting conversation. Excellent. Well, so these are three excellent tips for avoiding being boring on a date. Hope this is helpful. And what I'd like you to do right now is Go ahead, if you found this useful, I hope you hit the like and subscribe. It's really, really important for us. Uh, we have about 700,000 people that we're working with right now through email and through other methods. And we want you on our YouTube channel. You're going to get tremendous benefit out of this. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.